Hello, YouTube. Um, my name is Abigail Oren, and I'm here with Ada Barla. Yay! And we are the creators of Devon Thing for Historians. And um, why are we here today? Well, um, you know, it's a big week in the United States um, where uh, both of us are voters. Yeah. And we are uh, on pins and needles. And we thought, you know, uh, maybe this would be a good time to distract ourselves and play with some new software. <laughs> so um, I want to uh, give a big shout out and thank you to Charlene Fletcher, who yes. recommended this tool to us on Twitter. Um, yes. And um, so this tool we're going to play with today is called Margin Note. And um, I've played around with it a little bit, uh, and I think it's very cool, and it um, can work with uh, Dev and Think. And so we're going to kind of show what that workflow might look like. Um, but this is going to be very freeform. Um, this is not quite a tutorial. Uh, it's more of a, um, you know, watch us uh, explore and play. Explore and, and, yeah, and figure this out. Um, and we hope that, um, I don't know, our sparkling personalities <laughs> keep it uh, lively. So uh, I guess we have to do the, the YouTube thing. Um, if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, if you want to turn on the notifications, uh, then you'll know when we upload. Um, and uh, leave a comment uh, with any questions or ideas for us. Uh, we love to see them. Yes, and from this video, everyone knows now that when we get comments and questions, we create videos. So yeah, yeah please let exactly. us know what you'd like to see. Yes, exactly, totally. So um, what are we looking at here? So um, you can see uh, in the foreground, I have margin note open and in the background, I have my Dev and Think um, sample database. Um, all right, I'm gonna close my business database real quick. Pretend this isn't happening. Oh, for you who don't know how to close a database. Um, oops, I'm in the wrong. Um, all right, I'm gonna do it this way. Close database. Okay, so now it's just my sample database. Okay, so um, I want to quickly show what I played around with. Um, so I was writing a um, blog post for the Urban History Association's blog, The Metropole, um, which I'm a co-editor of. Uh, I was writing uh, an overview for our um, Twin Cities Metropolis of the Month, and um, we can link uh, we can leave the link to that post in the down bar so you yes. can kind of see um, how I incorporated um, this uh, margin note mind map uh, into my writing uh, of this overview. Um, but there was a section um, I wanted to write about um, uh, queer communities in the Twin Cities in the um, late 19th and early 20th century. Um, and so I found this awesome um, chapter in a book. Um, the book is, and see, I've created a super annotation um, to accompany uh, this. It's uh, Queer Twin Cities, um, edited by um, Murphy, Pierce, and Knopp. And so what I did was I read the piece in margin note and, and we'll show um, how to do this with another example. And I made highlights and basically what margin note then does is kind of smush all together, all of your, your annotations. And then you can do this view where you create kind of a I'll make this bigger so you can see um, this kind of mind map thing. All right, so let's go back to margin note. Before we do that, can we, I guess, put it, put what you've done, which is really cool. And I'm really excited for everyone to, this is a great, this video is a great opportunity to see the process that we talk a lot about in the course, going from you know inputting to outputting. So you kind of see a micro version of that. 
Yeah. So I, uh, can, can we maybe spend just an extra minute and I'm going to summarize what I, I think your process was just to sure. make it a bit more explicit. So from what I'm understanding, you wanted to write a piece and you were like, okay, great. I already have one awesome tool. That tool is Devin Think. And what tools could I use to c- complement that? And you identified uh, margin notes. So you're like, oh, cool. I've got my two tools. Went off and found a really awesome reference. I'm not sure if this is the only reference you used or if you used multiple references. Um, or from, yeah, I use okay. many. So, so you went off and you found um, multiple references, read those references, pulled out the pieces that you thought were interesting. And then in your writing phase, you put them all together. Yes. Yeah. And so that's where you went from inputting, collecting the data and summarizing the data and understanding the, the sources that you collected all the way through to what we call outputting, which is writing the, the, um, writing the piece, publishing the piece, um, and going from there. Yeah, exactly. Very exciting. Um, where is it? All right. This feels dumb searching my own name, but here we go. Oh, no, it's great. There it was. So yeah, so this is the blog post. So um, let's see, right really Lots of stuff here. I've seen at least 17. Yeah, so yeah. this is um, where I started writing about this chapter here. Um, so yeah, it's part of a, a much, um, longer, uh, dive into, um, the history of the Twin Cities. Um, but I, um, uh, wove the, um, arguments from this chapter into my larger narrative. So I basically framed the whole overview around this section of a, novel that came out in 2019 called This Tender Land by William Kent Kruger, which is a wonderful novel, um, completely recommend it. Um, but it there's this um, section set in the Twin Cities in the 1930s. So one cool. of the characters um, or two of the characters are um, a queer couple. And so I wanted to use their relationship as a way to talk about um, what it might have been like at the time to be queer in the Twin Cities. Yeah. So that's why this article was so perfect um, because it looks at this period between 1880 and 1920. Let me actually open this in margin note. Very cool. Very cool. And so one of the questions that I have that that you know, I'm curious your answer, and I think it'll help everyone that's watching also learn. You know, the cool parts about margin note um, is wh- why did you choose to to use this tool? Like, why add this tool to your your uh, research toolkit? Um, sorry, I'm I don't know why this isn't opening. <laughs> um, I think my computer might be frozen. Oh, all right. Well, we can pause and we'll be back after we unfreeze the computer. Let me pause right now. Yay, we're back. All right. Sorry about that. We had uh, to restart uh, the app. Okay. So you can see here, um, I've opened this map up in margin note. And voila, here is the um the book chapter the um pdf of the book chapter so ada um you had asked me a question why why did i do this instead of like just working within dev and think right um, so honestly it's um I, my normal uh workflow is to move a pdf into dev and think and annotate within De- dev and think yes. take yes. any notes into the comments field in my super annotation right. and move on to right. writing. I, um, to say I was fried <laughs> at the point I was writing this, oh. I was 
like so mentally burned out um because it was such it's trying to to take you know hundreds of years of history for two cities <laughs> like collapse into 3000 words oy and so i was finding that like i had read this you know i was reading this piece and just wanted to quote everything in it and also had no idea how to quote anything from it within the piece and so i felt like i if I didn't have margin note, probably what I would have done is pulled out like a sheet of printer paper and like one of those legal size ones and started doing this analog style, you know? Oh, interesting. Um, so this had the added advantage of being able, it like automates part of the process, right? Like instead of me having to like write out you know, draw a bubble stories about sex, whether in the context of masculine bonding, yeah. uh, you know, page 41, yeah. um, I just made this highlight and it basically populated it into, um, into this outline here. Oh, now. I think there's also a comment I made here. Let's see. I, again, I made this a few weeks ago, so I'm not. It's okay. Exploring is I, good. Okay. So this is the document location. I don't know. Uh, we will play around with it with a new document and maybe I'll remember how I did that, but, okay, okay. Um, but basically you see it. Um, I, the highlights all kind of like come into this outline form as well. And then also, yeah. And then also, um, into sticky form. Yes. So I dragged, like I dragged all of these into this order. Um, so, uh, so it really I, is saving you that time and energy and effort mm -hmm. of, um, not only being able to pull out the pieces that are interesting, which happens a lot with, uh, highlighting in a variety of tools you can highlight in a pdf editor even but right. to take what you've highlighted and add some sort of structure or hierarchy to them is yeah. really a strength of margin note from from the example you're showing us very cool exactly so um, um, let me um yeah so like i could drag oops uh no that's not what i want um, I could like make that a child of this note instead of, for example, if I realized, oh, so I think if I recall correctly, this is a, is evidence or a support for an argument that's made in this point, which is a sub point of this argument, I think, um, again, did this a few weeks ago. But um, yeah, I, I just think this is super cool. So I think we should just try making a new one. Yeah, yeah perhaps. So, I have lots of questions. I've already, I have um, my questions here. So I'll, I think I'll observe you do this and pepper in when appropriate. Uh, my question perfect. about that, if that's okay. It'll be more of an interview uh, <laughs> than a co, uh, co demo. Yeah. That sounds great. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to um, Devin Think real quick. Okay. And I'm gonna pick up this other um, article I have here. Sure. And how am I gonna move this from one to the other? Can I open with margin note three? Will that work? <laughs> very nice very exciting Mwahaha. okay so let's see i wrote about fort snelling a lot so let's let's see So you're just clicking and dragging and that's how you're creating this highlight? Yes. Sweet. So, um, oh, and then you can have different colors. Love that. Yeah. 
And I'm going to do, okay. So this is actually, so that's actually, that's St. Paul. Let's see. This one's about Minneapolis. I'm gonna, I can make that green. Um, bum, 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 bum. Anything else here? Fort Snelling. And so this color code in, in the course, we do talk a bit about schemas and how you can design, um, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, naming conventions and other things for your for your research. So you could pretty much replicate a system if you had a system of color codes in Devon Think. You could use a similar one here. Yeah, totally. That's for really um, cool. keep everything consistent. Yeah. Let's see. if there are any other mentions of Fort Snelling that I missed. Page one, page one, page two, page two, page two. Okay, so just the ones that I did find, okay. Um, and let's see, any other mentions of Minneapolis? This is a chapter about St. Paul or a book about St. Paul in particular, so I wouldn't be surprised. Okay. And did you have to OCR this document? Before? Was it OCR'd when you put it into Devon Bank? Or? I believe, yeah, this is, um, it's from a um, academic database. I, I don't know, remember if it's JSTOR or Project Muse, uh, or one of them, but yeah, it, it arrived, it arrived to me PDF, I mean OCR'd rather. Yeah, and so just in case, the people that are watching don't know what that means. OCR is for optical character recognition. And it means that the PDF is searchable uh, by software. As you can see here, Abigail is searching by different words and it recognizes the words in the PDF. Sometimes PDFs can <clears throat> not be OCR and that means you can't highlight the text and it, it really is more something more like an image than a document. So OCRing is a big, a big part of making a, documents commentable and highlightable and all that good stuff. Yes. Okay, so these are our highlights. We're now in our- Ooh, and I love how the color is associated. That's really cool. Yeah, this is nice. I mm -hmm. like it. Um, okay. and I like this process as well. So you, you find the document, you read the document, you're like, ooh, that's interesting. Ooh, that's interesting. Ooh, that's interesting. And now you can come back and say like, how do all these interesting things relate to each other? I like that. I like that you can um, mm -hmm. kind of be focused on observing the content and figuring out what you think is interesting and then putting associations yeah. between them. I want it to, oops. Oh, and you can even add your own little notes. That's yeah. super cool. That is super cool. I, I'm that has nothing to do with this okay. article in particular. It is a fact I know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but I think that that's fun that you can pull things in. One of the questions I had, and you may not know, is can you take these pieces of a mind map from other documents and, and mash documents together? Yes. That is super cool. What I've done is that you can see I have my first, the Queer Twin Cities mind map open and the St. Paul founding years map open. And I've just put them in side-by-side -side windows. I've just resized them so they fit neatly on my screen. Mm -hmm. And if you hit this drag, what it'll allow you to do is move a node from one map to another and you'll see if you click in the corner here, it'll show the original reference. Very so you cool. know, yeah, you know where it originally came from. So now I'm gonna undo that. Um, but it could be interesting. Let's say, hold on. 
Um, do we have anything about the military in here? Women, not really. Um, anything specifically about this one specifically about Minneapolis. So let's take these two. Let me see if I hit shift, can I pick yeah, both of them? Both. All right. So, oops. Oops. There you go. go. We can put those. And why don't we do it so that these act branch style. What does that mean? <laughs> it's a box of ideas. Uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like it bigger, but I don't understand how that's an idea box. Okay, we're gonna undo it. <laughs> it's an idea for another day. Okay, but I, what I want it to do is kind of be like more, no, kind of be below. How do I? Oh, nope. <sighs> what happens if I click that? Okay, so that does the same thing, it just makes it co-equal with. So I guess if you hit um, this one, it will create like a new node off of this one, like as a child of this one, and this creates a new node that's equal to this one. Okay, that's nice. Um, but I guess I, I want... What, what are you looking to achieve? Oops, oh, I don't know what I did there. Oh, 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 I see. Okay, so I guess this minimizes and maximizes. Like you can, ah, uh, if you don't wanna see these. Like, right. okay. Um, I wanted this to kind of come off of this, like from below, but I don't know if that, ooh, I have no idea what I just did there. I think I just changed the view. All right. Doesn't look so different. All right. Um, all right. I guess I, it's not gonna let me rearrange it in quite the way I want. This still makes sense though. Okay. Well, so you can move between, and you can see like this stays here. It's not that it like deletes it from here because this is like originating in this piece, mm -hmm. um, but you can create like a master mind map. Um, Very cool. And I'm sure there's a ton of features to that. You know, yep. We're not familiar with this is, I think, well, this is the first time I'm seeing margin notes. And you know, I think you've only had time to play with that once or twice before this recording so yeah okay so this is cool so now actually if you're it looks like if you click on this well that allows you to give a note title so we'll call this one Fort Snelling and then add comments um all mentions in article uh, chapter about or smelling. Okay, and I guess we can add tags too. Yeah. Oh, I thought that would add the hashtag. Okay, I guess that's how you add it. It looks like the spaces are um, forbidden, prohibited. Mm. There we go. Okay, I don't, okay. I don't know what I put in. And a photo? Does this mean you can add a photo, perhaps? Yeah, and I guess voice and notes. Voice recording? Is and that? the drawing. Very cool. So this must be so awesome on the iPad app. You can, like, use your um, Apple Pencil. and. That's very cool. Very cool. Very cool. Probably the best note I've ever left for myself. <laughs> If you're a genius, that's for sure. I know. Oh, <laughs> I'm an artiste. That's okay. Um, so again, 
we can see our notes if this is help more helpful to you to do it in an outline view. Yeah. Available. And then you can export this um, to DevonThink as an RTF, uh, which I think just, I'm, I'm going to show it. Um, this probably wouldn't be, um, the way that I would do it. Um, cause, oh, right. I remember now because it creates like RTFs of all of the individual nodes. Uh, so uh. then you would move, hold on, I'll show, um, So this might be useful for some people, like these are the different nodes. I see, and all the different interesting things. The hashtags came, came over. Your fabulous drawing did not, but that's- uh, Thank you for the compliment. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I don't know, this this might be useful. You know, we, we have a lot of people who really like the um, Zettelkasten method, right. and maybe this is a, a good, um, dupe for, for Zettelkasten. Yeah. Um, I, this, it, to me, this is a mess. Um, I don't like it. So I am going to delete it. And what I would recommend doing is I think what I did was to export it in PDF format. Okay. And I, turned on, I wanted the mind map and the outline and I wanted all pages. Mm -hmm. And I guess I wanted the right margin too. I, I don't remember why, um, but basically what that will do is create the same thing that, you know, I showed with the queer um, Twin Cities. So sure. um, it's even that. And now I can drag that in here. Okay. Um, and here we go. And then I, what I can do is create uh, a super annotation. Cool. But, and the super annotations for those of you that aren't familiar are something that we've created um, and share with people that uh, purchase our super user uh, guide for uh, DevonThink. Yep, and you would just put in, I'm not gonna go ahead and put it all yeah. in. You can see what it would look like um, here. The, the, the core benefit, and I'm curious what your thoughts are on this as well, Abigail, but the largest benefit, um, there we go. That we've seen so far for the super annotations is the ability to then export this data, this um, yes. annotation data, and particularly the citation data into a reference manager. And, and we show you how to do that in our course to uh, bookends. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's a very, you know, this is a really um, a crash course. In Rough using, and exploratory. <laughs> yeah, using margin note. Um, but um, I do feel like you can get sort of a sense. Oh, let me show this view too. So you can also um, like go and just open your documents in margin note by using this document view. And this is called the study view, these mind maps. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, for those people who aren't in love with um, DevonThink as an annotation tool, I, I love it. I love having everything all together. Um, but, you know, sometimes you want a bit more robust uh, annotation features like this ability to create these mind maps. Yeah. And it's nice to be able to, you um, use margin note as a tool, but ultimately bring everything back into your database 
so that you don't have half of your stuff in Marginote and half of your stuff in Devon Think and half of your, well, those are, there's only two halves, never mind. <laughs> and maybe some other, who knows, there might be stuff in other places. Um, right. <laughs> well, one question I did have, I'm peeking at my notes that I, I crafted before we started our conversation is, how did you use the uh, mind maps in your writing and how, how has having a, a mind map from margin notes helped you in this output phase in the writing phase, maybe in a way that the annotations um, and the highlights and Devin think couldn't, or, or, you know, it's just better. Like what, was there a workflow when you were writing or something where you're like, Ooh, I'm really happy. I was able to create this mind map. It it's a little bit hard to talk about the process after the fact, I just don't remember it so clearly. Mm. But my my recollection is that, um, why isn't this opening? Um, whatever, basically I, once I had sort of an understanding of what um, the art, the book chapter was arguing and I knew what the, novel um like the the novel had covered and I was trying to kind of blend them together I was able because I had all of these sort of choice quotes I was able to really quickly look at the novel text look at the quotes and say okay I think for example this quote here um sums up their argument really succinctly. It venerated, it was a society that venerated homosocial spaces as foundations of prosperity and productivity. Um, and then, you know, I could describe a little bit about um, these two characters, Gertie and Flo, um, and say they were typical insofar as model families of the period did not necessarily involve heterosexual relations. Um, and so I think I was just kind of weaving together the, um, the, the novel and parts of, of um, the book chapter that I had identified using um, margin note and the mind map. Yeah, yeah. And so it would have been a similar process for you if you weren't using margin note and, but you would have had to look at the, the highlighted sections and maybe not this visual mind map. Yeah, and so I'll say, I I do this all the time um, in Devon Think. Let me, uh, why, I don't understand, because I'm screen sharing, it is. Um, not as responsive. Yeah. Um, Here, well, you can always pause again and. Yeah, pa let's pause it one second. I'm gonna pull up a new um, window. No. Okay, one second. There we go. And we're back. Um, are you seeing the Zoom screen? screen? No. Okay, I don't. I'm seeing just okay. Devin Think. All right, Zoom is annoying. Right. <laughs> so um, you can see here, this is just another um, annotated chapter. So often I'll do this within um, Devin think just by going into the inspector pane to the uh, document tab and the annotation and selecting annotations. Yeah. And then I can just, you know. You'll click go until I find, yeah, my highlights. So again, like, I don't think the utility of margin note is to be able to find your annotations. It's yeah. if you're struggling to, um, like you wanna reverse outline mm -hmm. the argument of the, the reading, or you are trying to, for example, you're working with a couple of different readings um, and you wanna drag some of those nodes together into a, you know, a map so you can kind of see how they're in conversation with each other. That's the real advantage, I think, of margin note. Um, and I like that, yeah, once you're done working in margin note, you can move it back into Dumb and Think to have it all together. 
and have it all together. So it's really a, a, an interesting trade-off everyone has to make because like Devin Think, Margin Note, has, you know, it's a paid software service so people can evaluate, you know, hey, is the benefit that I'm gonna get from using either tool really offset um, the, the cost? Which yeah. is, you know, we also make in, in these purchase decisions. But I love the, the comparison that we're making um, and even these extra things, because I'm not sure if, if we spent so much time in previous videos highlighting, you know, the annotations tab in the right. inspector um, and comparing and contrasting that with using another tool. So if for anyone that's watching, you're like, oh, you know, that's good enough for me. And, you know, I've got my own ways or I like to use my Zettelkessen cards or post-it notes, then right. that's awesome. And maybe Devin think on its own will work. But if you're looking for a tool where you can, um, manipulate and reorganize your notes and your highlights all in one space and that space be digital, then I think margin notes are really cool, cool tool. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, uh, Ada, I haven't thought about the election in like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Mission accomplished then. Mission accomplished. So yeah, I think we'll, I think we can wrap up here. Let me see if I have any questions. I think, yeah, we, we've answered all of them, you know, a super orientation is still valuable because you still mm -hmm. need to get the citation information into a reference manager. So that's yep. why super orientation is, is uh, valuable. The two tools really complement each other in a way. Um, and, and it can really help you. I think the, the big contribution of margin note, at least to your workflow, as, as we've discussed it, is giving you this visual way of organizing the arguments. So you can, um, you know, complete or uh, build out your 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 article or your piece yeah yeah cool, yeah. cool. so I, I would say yeah it's um i think 40 dollars to get margin note um and there is an um accompanying ipad app um i love doing this kind of work on my ipad um i'm pretty sure i did the original um i read it in margin note on the iPad and use my um, Apple pencil to do all the highlighting and co making comments. And then I um, I think I went back to the desktop, opened it up on the desktop. It was all there, <laughs> magic. And um, used, I, I preferred to have like the mouse to do the dragging and dropping and making the mind map. Um, but cool. you can just as easily do it in the iPad app. Um, so I think it's worth it. Like I, I have no, yeah, no, uh, regrets about dropping the money to get it. I think I'm not going to, it's not going to be a tool I use every day, but, um, at those moments where I'm sitting there deciding whether, um, to quit and tear my hair out or, <laughs> <laughs> um, keep going. I'll pick up margin note and margin note will be the tool that will like help me, um, clear that hurdle and, you know, get my thinking back on track. Cool. Cool. So Devin think will still be kind of the center of your, your research universe. And Forever. <laughs> <laughs> Forever. I can't live without this tool. Awesome, um, awesome, awesome. Well, I hope that I learned a lot um, in this conversation and it's given me a new, some new thoughts on workflows and the cool tools that can support all of our research workflow. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed sharing uh, you know, this project that you've worked on. If anyone has any questions, we're game, we're open to your questions um, about Devin Think for sure. And if we, if you send us questions about margin note, um, you know, we'll, we can look into them and point you in the right direction. Um, and when, don't hesitate to introduce us to new other tools, I think. For both of us, it's a really fun thing to learn about. We really do appreciate you watching, especially if you're a subscriber. Um, we really are grateful for everyone that subscribes to our channel. If you're not a subscriber, please do consider uh, subscribing to the channel. Not all of our videos are this long or um, stream of consciousness. So feel free to check out some of our other videos and leave a comment. Let us know, do you like this format? Do you not like this format? And uh, yeah, we're, we're excited to get your feedback. So have a great day. And we'll see you next time. Bye.